Greetings YouTube and welcome to the Blue Corner and to another card of my Vanguard Tournaments results video. And this video, I just have only three tournaments to talk about. One teams and two singles. And the singles are where some interesting things happen. So let's get into this. First up we have the ninth Hachiochi Cup for standard format, 48 teams. It was won by Oracle Think Tank, Angels and Shadows. Second was Murakumo, Angel Feathers and Shadows. Third was Murakumo, Gold Paladins and OJT. Third was Angels, Golds, and Great Nature. As far as the numbers go, Angel, Shadows, Murakumo, Royal Paladin, and Golds were the most played decks. Interestingly enough, 10 Greek Gear Chronicle players were present, but none of them did anything. So we first have our first place player, first place, first place, second place, second place, second place, third place, third place, and third place, and then fourth, fourth, and fourth. Moving on, we have next, if we can get there, the, I'm not even going to bother saying his name because it's going to be wrong. It's another singles BGCS BMC qualifier. 43 people attended it and Neo Nectar won it, beating Shadow Paladin, followed by Royals, Great Nature, and the fifth, eighth place were two Shadows, a Neo Nectar and a Narukami. So Neo Nectar is still showing that it's got the ability to compete. And this build was playing maxed copies of Rebecca and one less copy of Merka and two copies of Corolla Dragon. Oh, I'm not really a keen on reducing the number of Merkas you play in your deck by any amount. I think that's legitimately one of your best grade ones. And you've got your Shadow Paladin deck list, your Royal Paladin deck list, three extra page is becoming more and more common. Rip anyone who is trying to pick up that stuff. Have you seen the price of SVR Exclopates as of late? And then you've got your Hamskate Great Nature. And then we have the second Sapporo Cup BG VMC qualifier. I keep saying VGCS by accident. 59 people for standard. First place was Oracle Think Tank, followed by Angels, followed by Oracle Think Tank, and fourth place is Unknown. I forgot to do the clan representation of the previous tournament, and its numbers were 10 Shadows, 5 Royals, 4 Oracle Think Tank, Murakumo, Neon Hector, tied up that, and then 3 Gears, 3 Angels, and 3 Narus. As for this one, OTT was the most played, followed by Angels, Shadows, Royals, Neos, Kagero, like Joker Genesis, only two Murakumo. And that's kind of the subject that I was going to bring up here is that between this weekend and last weekend, Murakumo's done nothing as far as singles go. Like, it's still seeing play in teams, but that's because it's teams and you're not allowed to double up on clans in a team, and I'm willing to bet if that restriction wasn't there and it played more like YCS Atlanta for Yu-Gi-Oh, we'd see Triple Angel Feather or Angel Angel Oracle Think Tank or Angel Angel Shadow Paladin or something like that. And basically what I'm getting at here is that Murakumo is struggling outside of the team format, and I think we've all just been buying into the hype that is this deck, and it's actually not as overwhelmingly powerful as we thought it was. And why is that? Why is Murakumo not the best deck in format like we were led to believe the last ball? And I definitely admit to buying into that, and I apologize for that, but it just seemed like it was doing so well, and all of a sudden it's not. And what's going on? Well, as someone put it, conveniently and uh, oddly enough, because the new Murakumo deck is more focused on Shirayuki, you don't actually have a lot of early game plays. It's really you get to grade 3 and then you do things, which leaves you open to being rushed down in the early guy, guy, early game by more aggressive decks such as the Paladins, Neo Nectar, and Angel Feather if they manage to get a good hand. Like that, that can build a board from the onset and just smash face and potentially threaten you on the following turns. And this new build, yeah, it kind of is a bit weak to that because your big defensive play with Shiryuki isn't live until you ride to grade 3, and you need soul for that. And by cutting out some of the cards to make room for the Shiryuki engine, Murakumo loses access to its ability to push early. Also, because you're cutting out Mandala Lord for Shiryuki, you actually make your Angel Feather matchup worse because of the lack of extra attacks easily and the pressure that brings. So, it's an interesting conundrum that the Murakumo players are facing here. Do you continue to play the Shiryuki package because it's really strong against Axel and Force, or do you keep Mandala Lord in so you have a better matchup in to protect? And I'm curious if this kind of result is going to happen over here. I think there's a very strong chance just because North America loves its Paladins, and I can see Murakumo kind of faltering here for in that regard. Um... But 
what this ultimately means is, in my opinion, the best deck in the format has always been Angel Feather, and aside from every now and then where Murakumo manages to, like, get a win here because it can still win, it, yeah, it kind of has always just been Angels followed by Oracle, Tank Tank, Murakumo, Child Power. Like, those are your top four decks. It's just Angels are still just the best. And the extra booster in Bermuda Triangle have to do a lot of work to try and knock Angels off of their throne, although I, I highly doubt that's going to happen. Like, if anything, I think we're going to have to look towards Nova Grappler's Wave 2 to try and deal with Angel Feather. But that's unfortunately quite some time away. We're still in the middle of Bermuda Triangle Hell. Hashtag Azure Dragon doesn't exist. And all that jazz. So that's just pretty much like my thoughts on that. Comment down below on why you think Murakumo is just simply not topping as much because it's seeing play. Well, at least it was seeing play. Granted, their numbers have been down here, but still, like, for a deck that's supposedly so overwhelmingly powerful that we've all thought it was, it's kind of, like, falling up short. So, anyway, that's all I got for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Until next time, this is Boost39, jacking out.